In this session, we are going to see a demo of an update operation on MySQL database using JDBC. So this is a demo of uh, update operation on MySQL database using JDBC. An update operation is very similar to an insert operation except for the fact that we'll be using an update SQL query in our program and uh, we'll be working with mysql database so you're seeing php my admin and the database name here is vit and the table name i have a student i have two records inside the student table and the objective is to change the password from welcome to test for the very first record so i have my name here satish that is the first record and uh, the password is welcome country is india and mark is 45. so the objective is we have to change the password from welcome to test for Satish. Let's see how to do that. As usual, we have to first create a database connection. So let's start with a try and catch block. Let's handle all SQL exceptions here. And let's print the message e.get message. In case an exception arises, we should know what happened. Next thing is we have to create a connection object, initialize the tunnel and then load the driver. What is the driver here? That is com.mysql.cj.jdbc.driver and then dot new instance. So the driver instance is loaded. Next is we have to define the connection that is driver manager dot get connection and we have to specify the URL that is JDBC colon MySQL colon localhost colon port number is 3306 database name is VIT first parameter next parameter is pa password and I mean username and password so we have to give username then password that's it so we'll give a message saying database connection established and after that we need to create certain objects let's uh, add some throws declaration here okay so our connection is uh, established next thing is we have to create an object of type statement equal to connection dot create statement and we have to use the statement object for updating that is statement dot execute update so this is the method from the statement object that will be called for executing your update sql query so we are going to write a sql query here that will actually perform the update operation on the password field in the table called student so how will you write this update query it is update table name student set password that is the column name is equal to the new password that is test where the name of the student or the user is satish then you end the query and you have to end the string and then you have to give a semicolon for ending the java statement so that's how you write a SQL query for updating the password of Satish to test. So once when that is done, we can put a sysout statement saying record updated successfully. And uh, we can close the statement. Can we have to close the connection? Okay. So the password of Satish should be changed to test after we execute this. Let's see whether this code works first of all. Let's run this and check. Okay, database connection established successfully, record updated successfully. Very similar like insert except for the change in the query. Let's check our database let's uh, refresh this let's browse again 
So earlier it is welcome. Now let's see what is it after we refresh. Yeah, now the password got updated to test. So how did this happen? Using our Java code, using our JDBC connectivity, we were able to achieve the execution of this query on our MySQL table. So that's how you perform update. I hope you are clear with an update operation. Okay, now let us see a demo for deleting a record from a MySQL database using JDBC. This is a demo for deleting a record from a MySQL database using JDBC. So again, it's very similar. The very first thing is uh, we need to create a connection to the database and we have already created a connection here. The next thing is we should create an object of type statement. So let me go and create that object of type statement here. Statement stmt is equal to connection dot create statement. And we have to use this uh, statement object dot execute update. So if it's insert, delete or update, we have to use execute update and we have to give the query. So if I'm going to delete Satish, we don't like Satish, so let's delete him. So it is uh, delete from student where name is equal to Satish. And then we have to close the query, then the quotes and then the semicolon. Be cautious while you are closing all the brackets and the columns here. Sometimes you may forget to do that. Once when you are done with that, we can throw us a short message for us saying the record has been deleted successfully. Okay, and then we can close our statement and we can close the connection. That's it. Our delete operation is done for a record. The only change is we are just using a delete uh, SQL query here. So that's why I was telling you SQL plays a very important role in database operations that too when you're working with a relational database management system. So without knowing SQL query, it's very tough to achieve your objective. You should know the basics uh, in SQL too. So let's run this. Let's uh, check whether we are achieving the objective of deleting Satish from the database. Yeah, the record has been deleted successfully, but we'll verify it. So here is our Satish. So let's delete him. Let me refresh this. Let me browse again. Yeah, so this is a demo for deleting a record from the uh, program. So see there, there is a possibility that we can also create tables. We can also drop tables. I have shown you a demo on how to drop tables, how to drop databases. But normally such kind of an access is not given to developers. We'll be having a database administrators will be performing creation of a table or dropping of a table. So drop delete operations, uh, I mean drop of a table or uh, entire drop of a database will be done only by database administrators. Such kind of an access cannot be given to a developer because some developer writes some code and executes and then we have to lose the entire database and that will cause a problem to many of the users. I hope you all are now clear with how to perform a delete operation on MySQL. In a previous uh, session, we were looking at how to insert, delete and update records in a table using JDBC and for that we were using our MySQL database. In this session, we will be taking a look at how to fetch records from a table that is present inside the MySQL database using JDBC. So, this is a demo for fetching records from a table in MySQL database using JDBC. We all know the SQL query for fetching all the records from a table, right? What is the SQL query? Say the table name is student. Fetching all records from the table can be performed using this query. 
select star from table name that is student here and uh, what is the query for fetching the record of a student by name satish here the column name is name so we will perform select star from student where name that is the column name that is equal to satish so this retrieves only the record corresponding to satish and it retrieves all the columns from the table whereas this retrieves all the columns and rows from the table so we'll see how to fetch records and display to the user as usual the very first thing is we have to establish a database connection this is exactly the same like what we have done in our previous session so the code is here now let us uh, bring all the records by executing this query for that we have to create an object of type statement so statement stmt is equal to connection cyn dot create statement and we have to now execute this query select star from student we'll see how to perform that for that we need to call this method of the statement object it is stmt dot execute query say for insert delete and update we were using execute update but now we'll be calling execute query so whenever you are selecting always use execute query so that is the difference and we need to pass the sql query here what is the sql query simple select star from student and uh, close the java statement okay so when i execute this query what is getting returned so what is there in our database there is a table when i do select star from table what is getting returned from that method an entire table data structure is getting returned uh, the result is having rows and columns so this entire table is getting returned and we need to capture that here for that we will use an object of type result set rs is equal to statement dot execute query select star from student why we are creating an object of uh, type result set because when i execute this i'm getting an entire table that is uh, thrown from the database so i have to use a data structure which can hold rows and columns so i create an object of type result set and i capture whatever that is being returned from the database so to further understand result set let's take a look at an visualization let me run this say we have our table student table in the database let's assume the table has two records when i perform this statement dot execute query select star from student what will be returned this entire table is getting returned and that should be held in the main memory for our application to process that so here i am creating an object of type result set to hold this entire table and there will be a cursor that will be pointing to the record in the table so once when we push it to our uh, main memory we can search this table we can print records from the table we can do a lot of operations here so what we need to do is we need to traverse through this table for that we'll be using a cursor this cursor will be pointing to the first record in the table and we have two methods that we are going to learn there are many methods for a result set but we will take a look at these two methods rs.next when i perform rs this is result set object.next what happens is the cursor is positioned to the next record when i do rs.previous from the current record or the current object the cursor gets positioned to the previous object so rs.next will move the cursor to the next record rs.previous will move the cursor to the previous record say i can check whether there are any more records for instance when i do rs.next there is no record here so what rs.next will return is it will return a false so when there are no more records this will turn to false so it will do rs.next rs.next and then when it when there are no more records this method will return a false likewise when we do rs.previous rs.previous when there are no more previous records this will return a false okay so when rs.next returns a false when there are no more records when you have reached the end of the table that is one scenario let's take a look at another scenario here 
So we have the table and uh, again we are executing a query but now I'm trying to search for a student by name Jeff who is not present in our database. Is Jeff here? Jeff is not there. So when you execute this query what happens is uh, this result set is not going to have any uh, rows or columns because there is no such data present in our table. So how we can check whether the result set is empty is we can use this cursor and we can say if rs dot next equals false so we are checking we'll do rs dot next and if it equals false then there is uh, no record this is actually empty so that is what we are going to perform here we are going to check if rs dot next is equal to false obviously it will be false because it is empty and therefore we can say there is no such record as jeff in the table okay so this is about the result set and uh, i hope you are clear with uh, this slide this is very important why we use rs.next and why we use rs.previous what is this result set and why we need to create an object of type result set so with this uh, let's go and continue our code further so we have a result set created and the table getting returned and uh, it is being now uh, held inside this result set object what we'll do now is we'll traverse while rs.next so while there are records in our result set i'll just do sysout and i'll perform rs.getString and then give the column index so what is this rs.getString of one one is the first column in your result set so when you talk about the result set what is the first column here this is name so rs dot get string of one so one represents the first column we say it is string because name is a string so what is rs dot get string of two that is password column number two from the result set and we say it's get string because password is again a string what is this country that is rs dot get string of three column number three again it is a string so we say rs dot get string of three whereas mark is of type integer so what we are going to say is rs dot get int because it's an integer data type what is the column number that is four so that's how we retrieve the values present in the columns and rows from our result set so for every row we are going to fetch the value in each and every column for that record so this is for the first column the next column is rs dot get uh, string and the column number is 2 plus rs dot get uh, string and then the column number 3 this is for the country whereas the final one is rs dot get int because we are having marks there and the column number is 4 so this is traversing the result set object and fetching all the values for every record in every column i hope you are clear with this so this will print all the records so once when this is done what we have to do we have to close our statement and we have to close our uh, connection okay so our code is done so when we execute this on a student table all these four records should be displayed to the user that's uh, going to execute this you see all the four records corresponding to ramesh satish mohan and jeff so these four records were fetched from the table and displayed the only key thing is we need to understand how to use result set so now let us uh, make a check that is if the table is empty if there are no records in the table then we have to say the table is empty for that we'll make a check that is if rs dot next equals false it means the table has got no records then what we can do is we can do a sysout and say the table is empty 
a message to the user. So if rs.next equals false, it means that the table is empty. So we will say to the user, there are no records in the table. Else, what we'll do is we'll go and print all the records back to the user. So that is the simple if else statement we have here. So what we are trying to do here is if rs.next is equal to false, then we say the table is empty. Else, we are going to print all the records to the user. So let's execute this and see what happens. So we should be getting the four records printed here. But you see only three records are getting printed instead of the four records. So how many records? We have four records. But we are getting only three records printed here. Just because we added this condition, if rs.next equals false, that we are losing the first record in the table. So what is happening here? Let me go to the visualization again. So let me erase all link on the slide and uh, select this pointer. So when I perform, if rs.next is equal to false, so the cursor is here. When I do rs.next equals false, and I'm checking this, the cursor gets positioned here. And since there are no records in the table, it will print it as empty. But if there are records in the table, else, we just go to an else condition. So let me write this code here. First, we'll perform rs.next equals false right so when i perform this check since i'm doing an rs.next the position of the cursor goes to the next record and since this is not false because we have some records we'll be going to our l statement and then we'll be printing all the records in the table so this while condition executes so when this while condition executes it will start printing from the second record so that is the point here. Just because of this check, we are going to the second record. We are losing the first record. So how to avoid this problem? For that, we need to create a result set that is traversable. That is, you can traverse the result set either in the forward direction or in the reverse direction. For that, we need to create a result set like this. That is, in the dot create statement, we give result set dot and you have to select type scroll insensitive okay so what does that mean we can really scroll the uh, result set in the forward and the backward direction this constant indicating the type of result set object that is scrollable but generally not sensitive to changes to the data and we have to pass another parameter here too we have to make this result set updatable it is mandatory so result set dot updatable so we have to pass these two parameters so that we can now traverse the result set in the reverse so this one places the cursor to the second record now i have to traverse before pushing all the records out, I have to do rs.previous. So rs.previous will put my cursor again in the first record and then it's going to start printing all the records from the table. Let's execute this and check whether it's working fine. Yeah, now you're able to get that missing record back. Only thing what we have done is we did a check by the check we are moved to the second record we just use rs.previous and we went back and we started printing the records from the data set so this works for displaying all the records from our table that's how you use a result set for fetching all the records okay we have seen how to fetch all the records from the table now let us see how to fetch a specific record from the table say i want to fetch only the record corresponding to Satish here. So how to make the change? It's just a SQL query change. Wherever we have the SQL query, select staff from student, we have to include where name is 
Satish. So I am fetching my record from the table. I'm just giving my name as Satish here. That's it. So this is going to fetch the record corresponding to Satish from the table. And uh, we have this record Satish. So we have to see Satish welcome India 45 as our output. Again, this one rs dot next is equal to false. Uh, this will not be uh, returning a true because we have this record called Satish. So it's going to come here and print the record. Let's execute this and see whether we are able to search for a record here. Yes, we were able to fetch the record of Satish. What if I search for something like this? I am searching for a student called Jeff. Is Jeff in our table? Jeff is there in our table. So let's uh, search for someone else. Say let's search for uh, Harini. So now we are going to search for this student called Harini from our table. But uh, when you take a look at our database, there is no such student. So what should be the result? So this is going to be true. There will be no records present in our result set because there is no such student called Harini. So what we are going to say here is no such record found in the database. You have to give appropriate feedback to the user. That is very important. Now if you execute this, what is the output we are going to get? No such record found in the database. So we are able to successfully search for a record in the database by using the select operation, retrieve that and print that by using the methods in a result set. That's about uh, select operations from a database using JDBC. I hope you are now very clear with how to use a result set and how to perform this select operation. So in our previous sessions, we are looking at how to insert, update, delete and select records from a table. Say talking about the insert query, how did we insert data? I have given this code here. So we were running this SQL query to insert data, right? Insert into student values some uh, values we are specifying in our query and we were running this uh, program to update our database but then the point here is you see this data is static right whenever i run this code always assume test one two three us 87 will be updated so our objective is always to get the data from the users and update it to the database Whereas here, we are not getting the data from the users. We are just like that populating the values directly here and updating. So whenever I run this program, only this data will be updated to the database. And if your database has a primary key constraint, then this will throw an exception. So in this case, our objective is to get the data from the user. Say, what is our objective? Get the details of the student from the user and update the and insert the record in the table so there's one small change here instead of just populating the data here we'll get the data from the user and update it in the table so for this we'll be using an object of type uh, prepared statement we'll see how we are going to get the data from the user and update it in the table so let's start with it let me delete all this all these lines of code and uh, our objective is first establish the connection with the database so that is done the next thing is we need to get the details from the user so for that what we are going to do we are going to have a scanner input is equal to new scanner system dot in so we'll have a sysout statement what all we are going to get is we are going to get the student name or else we can say enter the name enter your name that will be far better and we'll have a string name that will read in this uh, name that's coming in. 
likewise we'll have a sysout statement for getting the password we'll have string password is equal to input dot next line see you're just getting the input from the user here that's it nothing difficult likewise we'll have a sysout statement and then say enter your country and we'll have a string country that is input dot next line we'll get this country the final column in a database is actually an integer column so we have to give get the mark we'll say enter the mark and then we can get uh, we'll have an int mark here and we'll do input dot next int and so we are getting an integer value that is getting stored in mark so we have received all the details from the user now we have to pass this to our database so first we will write the SQL query as a string string SQL is equal to what is the SQL query we are going to write is insert into the table name student values and here is the difference for every value in the database I am going to give a question mark how many values I have one two three four four columns I have so for every column I will give a question mark so it's a question mark comma question mark comma question mark comma question mark See, this is how the query differs you know earlier we just gave the values directly some values we gave it was inserting but now we need to map all these values to the question marks here that is the idea so let's uh, close this statement okay so this is a string this is a query but then the challenge is mapping all these values to these question marks for that we need to use an object of type prepared statement that's what I told you initially let's go and create this object prepared statement okay prepared statement stmt is equal to connection dot prepare statement and now we are going to pass the SQL string here so we have already defined that string let's pass it that is nothing but SQL so this string is being passed here to this object the next thing what we have to do is we have to map okay this first question mark should be mapped to this parameter name and this question mark should be mapped to this parameter password so we will perform that for that we need to use the prepared statement object stmt dot set string we have to give the parameter index what is the parameter index that is one this is the parameter index that is one and what is the value we are going to map here name so this name corresponds to whatever name we have read from the user this one actually means to which parameter we are mapping so one here is the first question mark so name is mapped to the first question mark like that we can go and perform this for parameter index 2 what we are going to pass it is password say so please keep in mind you have to pass that in the order say so you have name password country and mark the same order should be followed here this is for name this is for password this is for country and this is for mark so the parameter index 3 is nothing but we are going to have country being passed here keep in mind this country is the country that we are reading in from the user and then we have to pass the mark that is parameter index 4 and then you pass the mark so all the parameters were mapped four parameters we had all the four parameters were mapped to the values given by the user next there is one issue here you see this is a copy paste issue I have done set string but this fourth parameter is an integer so be aware of copy paste issues so it is stmt dot set int and then the parameter index is 4 and we have mark okay so we have solved that issue finally we have to execute this uh, statement for that we will use statement dot execute that's it so statement dot execute will take this query bind these parameters to this uh, question marks here to all the question marks here and then we'll execute that query 
on our database. So let's run this. Let's see whether it's working. So enter your name. Now the user enters, say, in our table, we don't have this record for Harini. Let's go and enter a student by name Harini here. Enter password for the student. We'll say test Harini. That is the password. And country, we can say US. Mark, let's say 67. So this record or the details for this record is being entered by the user and it is captured in these parameters. And these parameters are getting mapped to the question marks in our query and then that will be executed on the database. So now let us press and enter and execute it. Yeah, the record is getting inserted. We don't have any message here because we didn't give us a sort message, but then we can directly check our database. Let's refresh this. Let's check whether the record for Arini is inserted in our database. Yes, you see the record for Harini got inserted in the database. So we were able to achieve this by getting the data from the user. For this, we were using the object of type prepared statement. Always use a prepared statement. We can also directly populate the strings in the query, but that will lead to SQL injection attacks. And uh, that is a very common attack to ruin your databases. So we don't follow that kind of a method. We will use a prepared statement like what I have taught here for our insert queries. If you are really interested in SQL injection attacks and things like that, you can refer to my uh, video on cyber security where I explain how a SQL injection attack will happen. If you don't want to worry about all these things, just go on with a prepared statement. That's it. And can we execute another record? Let's, uh, let's put a sysout statement, say record inserted successfully the user should always get some feedback let's execute and check whether we are able to insert another record so we have Ramesh, Satish, Mohan, Jeff and Harini let's insert another record let's call this student to be Venget password for Venget is say Bank at one, two, three, and country. Let him be from India and mark 33. So now, when I press enter, say now I'm getting a feedback that record inserted successfully. And I have to check. Let me browse, refresh this page again to see whether Venkat is present in our database. Yes. You see, the record of Venkat got inserted in our database. So that's how we can insert the data into a database by getting the data from the users and passing the data to the query. I hope you are clear with how to use a prepared statement for this.